Good morning, everyone. Today we will discuss 17th chapter of Popov. Title of this chapter is Energy and Virtual Work. We have on our screen infinitesimally small stress element of size dx by dy by dz. This stress element is experiencing a stress in s direction sigma x. <coughs> so this is a case of uniaxial loading. Due to the application of stress in the x direction, this <coughs> element would experience a deformation and a corresponding work would be done. Average force would be equal to half sigma x into dy into dz and distance covered by this force would be epsilon x into dx. So the total work done becomes <clears throat> half sigma x into epsilon x dx dy dz. This work gets stored inside the element as internal elastic strain energy. So <clears throat> internal elastic strain energy can be written as du equal to half sigma x into epsilon x into dv where v is the volume of the element. Here now we can define strain energy density as du by dv equal to sigma x into epsilon x by 2. <clears throat> now let us try to see elastic strain energy for shear stresses. On screen you are seeing infinitesimally small stress element of sizes dx by dy by dz experiencing pure shear. <clears throat> On the right hand side you are also seeing shear deformation gamma. Due to this shear deformation gamma, angular term gamma, there is a movement of gamma dy of the top surface of the infinitesimally small stress element. Now we can see that the average force acting is half tau into dx into dz and the distance covered by this force is gamma into dy. So the work done <coughs> by the stress becomes half tau into gamma into dx dy dz. This work gets stored as internal elastic strain energy due to shear. <coughs> and here we can define strain energy density as du by dv equal to tau into gamma divided by 2. Now let us look at <coughs> infinitesimally small stress element which is subjected to all types of stresses. It is experiencing sigma xx in the x direction, sigma yy in the y direction, sigma zz in the z direction. <coughs> also it is experiencing sigma yx, the top roof of this element is experiencing sigma yx which is in x direction and which is on a plane which is perpendicular to the y direction. Similarly, sigma xy is acting on a plane which is perpendicular to the x direction <clears throat> and it is acting in the y direction. So for this uh, stress element, the strain energy density now becomes equal to half bracket start sigma x into epsilon x plus sigma y into epsilon y plus sigma z into epsilon z plus tau xy into gamma xy plus tau yz into gamma yz plus tau zx into gamma zx bracket close. <coughs> Now this gives us expression for total internal strain energy 
which you can see is volume integral of <coughs> sigma x into strain x plus sigma y into strain y plus sigma z into strain z plus tau xy gamma xy plus tau xz gamma xz plus tau yz gamma yz divided by 2. <coughs> now let us look at the case for actually loaded bars as well as in bent and sheared beams. So this expression is valid for this case. Expression for strain energy becomes volume integral of half bracket start sigma x epsilon x plus tau xy gamma xy bracket close and you can see that we can uh, we can uh, you know separate this integral into two clear parts in which volume integral of sigma x square by 2e represents uh, for axial loading and bending of beams. And the volume integral of tau xy square by 2g uh, is the contribution of shear in beams. And if we use the, use the Hooke's law, then we can manipulate this expression further. <clears throat> now let us look at strain energy for axially loaded bars. For actually loaded bars, strain energy would be sigma x square by 2e, volume integral of this term. And if the bar is experiencing a load of capital B, and if capital A is the area of cross-section of the bar, then strain energy becomes <coughs> integral in x direction of p square by 2ae. Here we have to appreciate that area A is constant for this bar throughout the length of the bar. <clears throat> okay, now if we substitute the expression of deformation of uh, bar, actually loaded bar, into the expression of strain energy, then you can see that we end up getting expression of strain energy as a into e into delta square divided by 2l where delta is <coughs> axial deformation of the axial bar due to load p acting on it so you can see very well that strain energy is proportional in this case for uh, proportional to square of the deformation in uh, axial direction now let us look at strain energy for beams in bending. <clears throat> for beams in bending, strain energy would be volume integral of sigma x square by 2e. Here, if we use the expression of uh, bending equation, if we use, then we can <clears throat> uh, uh, replace this sigma x in terms of uh, m and i. And why? And if we do that, then we find that strain energy becomes integral of m square by 2ei integral in x direction. <coughs> now let us look at strain energy for beams in shear. For beams in shear, strain energy would be volume integral of tau square by 2g. Now we need value of tau. <clears throat> now consider a cross section of a beam. The cross section is of size h by t. You can see the neutral axis. And let us consider an area fg hj at location y1 from the neutral axis. We want to find out <coughs> vertical shear at level y1. Now we know that vertical shear stress at level y1 would be equal to capital V into capital Q divided by IT, where capital Q is first moment of area FGHJ. <coughs> now 
Now, in this case, infinitesimal area is B into dy, substituting in this expression of vertical shear stress, we get vertical shear stress equal to V by 2Y bracket star H by 2 whole square minus Y1 square bracket close. <coughs> Now, expression of shear stress as we, uh, expression of strain energy as we already discussed is volume integral of tau square by 2g. And we have just derived expression of shear stress. Substituting it here, we get now the expression of strain energy stored due to shear in a beam. After evaluating this definite integral, we get strain energy stored due to shear as equal to three capital V square into L divided by five AG, where capital V is the shear force experienced by the beam, L is the length of the beam, A is the area of cross section, and capital G is the modulus of rigidity. Similarly, strain energy for circular tubes in torsion can be written as volume integral of tau square by 2g. <clears throat> now let us try to see how we can find displacements by using the concept of conservation of energy. We know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can just convert from one form into another. And the work done actually results in change in some energy. Now, as far as mechanics of materials is concerned, please appreciate that total work done by the externally applied forces during the loading process is equal to total strain energy stored in the system. So work done uh, uh, during the loading process gets stored inside the material as strain energy. And uh, <clears throat> here, of course, the assumptions are that it's an adiabatic process, no heat is generated in the system, and uh, forces are applied in quasi-static manner. Now let us look at axial loading of a uh, bar of length L. You can see <clears throat> due to axial load capital P, this bar is getting deformed by delta. So work done by axial force becomes P delta by 2. <clears throat> Expression of strain energy uh, tells us that the strain energy would be volume integral of sigma x square by 2e. Now let us write sigma x in terms of P and uh, then we can see that strain energy becomes P square L by 2A. And if we equate work done with the strain energy, then we get deformation delta equal to PL by AE. So here we can see that how concept of conservation of energy can be very nicely employed to find out deformation of a axial, axially loaded bar. Similarly, <clears throat> let us look a uh, rod of length L, which is experiencing torque T. Diameter of this rod is 2C. Now, we know that strain energy here would be equal to volume integral of tau square by 2G, where tau is the shear stress. And <clears throat> Shear stress is equal to tau max into rho by c, where c is the radius of this rod, and rho, rho is some radius uh, of uh, uh, some radius at which we are considering an infinitesimally small element of radial size d rho located at location rho. So if we complete this integration, then we find 
that strain energy stored is equal to tau max square divided by 2g into volume divided by 2. Due to gradually applied torque, work done would be T into phi by 2, where phi is the twist of this uh, rod at the far right end due to torque T. Now equating work and strain energy, and doing certain manipulation, mathematical manipulation, we find that twist phi is TL by IP into capital G, right? <clears throat> Where IP is pi C raised to power four by two, the polar second mom uh, moment of area. Now let us uh, look at uh, another cantilevered beam, uh, which is experiencing shear load capital P. So there is a shear also, there is a bending also. Let us uh, look at a section at distance X from the leftmost end of this cantilevered beam. This section experiences a shear load capital P and a resisting bending moment minus px. The cross section of this cantilevered beam is P, B into uh, B by H. I have also drawn deformed shape of this cantilevered beam and uh, we can see how shearing is happening in this particular example. External work in this case would be equal to 1 by 2 into P into delta, where P is the external force, delta is deformation in the direction of the force. As we already know, the shear stress at location Y of the cross section, just see the location Y of the cross section, is given by P divided by 2I bracket start H by 2 whole square minus Y square. And expression of uh, strain energy due to shear is volume integral of tau square by 2g. Here, if we, if we substitute the expression of shear stress, then we can see that strain energy become, uh, due to shear becomes equal to 3 p square l divided by 5 a g. Now, this is a example of combined loading. There is a shear also, there is a bending also. So there is some strain energy which gets stored in this particular example due to bending also. This strain energy can be evaluated as integral of m square divided by 2 ei in x direction from 0 to l. And <clears throat> if we write x, uh, if we write m as minus px, and if we integrate it, we get strain energy stored due to bending as p square l cube divided by 6ei. So total work done, which is p delta by 2 is equal to u bending plus u shear. That is work done gets stored inside this cantilevered beam as uh, strain energy due to shear plus strain energy due to bending. So we have P delta by 2 equal to P square L cube by 6 EI plus 3 P square L divided by 5 AG. And from here we can find out the deformation delta that is equal to P L cube by 3 EI plus 6 P L by 5 AG. Now, uh, we, had, we have just considered cases in which uh, there is a axial load on a bar and we are interested in finding out how much is the deformation. We simply equated the external work done with the energy stored 
strain energy stored. And then we looked at a case of a rod in which a torque T is applied and we want to find out how much is the twist at the right, far right end. Here also we simply equated external work done uh, with <coughs> the strain energy stored. Right. And here also we uh, want to find out how much is the deflection of the beam. And here also what we did was we equated external work with the strain energy that got stored in the system. Uh, now here what uh, you can see this, this uh, way has allowed us to find out elastic deflections caused by a single concentrated force at the point of application. Right? So that is the limitation of this particular uh, method. To overcome this limitation, we will now move on to virtual work methods. First of all, we'll discuss virtual displacement methods. And uh, this, uh, this all we will take up in the next class.